Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. I've got a bit of a secret and a valid excuse for this video. Hear me out. I love all of the weird and wonderful sides of computing. Yeah, gaming is fun, but purpose-built accelerators for things are something that really get my blood pumping. And when AMD released the Radeon W6800, we were lucky enough to get our hands on one and I've still got it here. Which is why when AMD asked us if we were interested in checking out the new RDNA 3 based Radeon Pro W7900, it was an instant yes and a no brainer. The only problem is, at the time of filming this video, we're leaving for Taiwan for Computex in just a day or two, and I just haven't had nearly enough time to test this card properly. What I did wanna do is share some of what I did find in the middle of all the mayhem we've got coming with Computex. Coincidentally, this video will probably come out when we're already in Taiwan. Now that you know my life story, let's take a whirlwind look at one of the most interesting bits of tech to come through the studio this year, the Radeon Pro W7900. Let's jump in. To kick this off, we've got no idea about availability or whether or not you'll be able to get your hands on the Radeon Pro W7900 at launch because this is a workstation GPU and they're typically harder to get in general. As far as the price, you're looking at around about 4,000 US dollars, around 6,000 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. I wanted to get the pricing out of the way nice and early because this is an expensive GPU and this thing is no joke. The W7900 is based on the RDNA 3 architecture and more specifically the Navi 31 GPU with 96 compute units. That's up from the 64 from the generation before. FP32 performance, it's pretty close to 60 teraflops and peak FP32 performance, it's around about 61 teraflops. On paper alone, that's more than three times more FP32 performance than this which is the previous generation W6800. As far as the memory, it's equipped with 48 gigs of GDDR6 with ECC and 96 megs of AMD Infinity Cache. The Radeon Pro W7900 features full hardware-based AV1 encode and decode. And it's also capable of real-time ray tracing like its desktop Focus 7900 XT counterpart. The W7900 can also be used with smart access memory or with resizable bar depending on the CPU used and is fully PCIe 4.0 compliant. Power is delivered by two 8-pin PCIe power connectors on the end of the card. Most workstation GPUs are like this. Maximum board power puts it at around 295 watts of maximum power draw. And as far as display connectivity, the W7900 features three DisplayPort 2.1 connectors and a single mini DisplayPort connector as well. As far as physical size of the W7900, it is larger than the W6800. We're seeing GPUs get bigger and bigger over time. So again, kind of not really surprising. For testing, we use our regular GPU test bench, which is the one behind me here. And for testing, as noted in the bottom of all the graphs, it shows all the hardware that we use. We use this test bench for all of our GPU testing. However, given the nature of this GPU, we would usually use a Threadripper Pro system, but we didn't have enough time and I'm sorry that this has happened guys, but I really did want to show you something with this card rather than nothing. I feel bad, but I suppose, again, something is better than nothing for now. We're going to come back and redo all of this, but let's look at some benchmarks that might interest you if you're a content creator. And these benchmarks are somewhat different from what we would usually do, but Let's just take a look at this anyway, because workstation GPUs are exciting. Let's check out Puget Bench for Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, let's move on to Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve. Yeah. 
Here's something that we usually test with these GPUs, but there's a little bit of a problem. With Blender, we saw some issues with it not supporting OpenCL and it looks as though they removed OpenCL support. So we tried using HIP, but we could only get it to work in the program and not the benchmarking program. And with the limited time that we had to test, we just had to scrap all these benchmarks. Again, we did get Blender to run with this GPU and render in Blender, but from my limited knowledge of Blender, it, it appeared to work fine. We do have plans to come back and revisit all this stuff with machine learning and AI workloads, but you'll just have to wait. I did want to show you something. I did want to show you the fact that we did have this card. The next question you might be asking yourself is, <laughs> Maybe you want to know this and what's the gaming performance like and this is not the intended use case for this card But I was curious to find out since it's pretty quick for us to run our GPU based gaming benchmarks We could only do this in Windows though given our time restraints. So let's take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider All right, let's do Unigen Superposition. On to Cyberpunk 2077. And lastly, Horizon Zero Dawn. As for thermals, we ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the W7900 above 69 degrees. <laughs> in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result is acceptable, but we are also running this on an open air test bench. These results in a closed system will be different from what you might observe if you're using this in a workstation setup. One metric I did want to share with you guys that I noticed when I was looking at the Radeon Pro software is it has intake temperature now. So it will tell you about the temperature of the air being pulled into the blower. And that was 17 degrees. Like I said, 18 degree climate controlled, we actually were a little bit lower than that at 17 degrees. The other thing is these GPU temperatures might seem a little bit high for those who aren't that familiar with workstation GPUs, but these GPUs are designed to run at this level all of the time and their thermal tolerances over time are much higher. So they can run at maximum temps 100% of the time. Yeah. And that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this very, very quick look at the Radeon Pro W7900. We're going to revisit this one because I think there's a lot more cool stuff to test when we have a bit more time with it. I also want to test it for its intended use case on a proper Threadripper Pro system. And if you want to see something specific with the W7900, please let us know in the comments. We want to know what professionals who use these type of GPUs actually want to see us benchmark. You name it. We can do it for you guys, but just let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, please subscribe. And if you didn't like this video, tell us what you didn't like about it. And I know this one, it was a quick one, but I did want to share just a couple benchmarks with you guys because I love these GPUs. I find them super duper interesting. And I know a lot of you out there also find this stuff really interesting. But given the fact that we've been in Taiwan for like three or four days by the time this video comes out and the embargo lifts. Yeah, we did receive this one pretty late on. And there's some other stuff that we had to say no to to fit this into our schedule as well. And by the time this video comes out, you probably would know about most of that stuff anyway. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek and thank you guys very, very much for tuning in. We'll see you in a couple days probably. Thanks for watching.